Hello on Look North this lunchtime. Ten years after her disappearance, Claudia Lawrence's family and friends say they'll never give up hope of finding her. And we visit Bradford's Polish school as it celebrates its 70th year. Good afternoon. The parents of Claudia Lawrence say they'll never give up hope as they mark the 10th anniversary of their daughter's disappearance in York. The search for 35-year-old Claudia became the most challenging investigation ever carried out by North Yorkshire Police. Despite several arrests, no one has ever been charged and detectives believe vital information is still being withheld. Our Home Affairs correspondent Emma Glasby has been speaking to Claudia's family and friends. <laughs> Good afternoon. My name is Peter Lawrence. Uh, I'm very concerned about my daughter. Fine. And what's your uh, daughter's name? Claudia. All of a sudden, she wasn't there. It eats into you, literally eats into you all the time. And that's the not knowing what's happened. And it carries on and on and on and on. The heartbreak never goes away. There's a lot of anger sometimes in me about the way that it was handled, the way it's still handled. It was like someone taking your parent or your sister or your favourite thing away from you with no warning and it was just, it was like in the blink of an eye. BBC Radio York. Police are concerned for the safety of a 35-year-old woman who hasn't been seen since she left work at the University of York. Claudia Lawrence. Ten years ago, the search for Claudia Lawrence was beginning. It would become one of the biggest investigations ever carried out by North Yorkshire Police. Claudia was seen heading home from work on the 18th of March 2009. She spoke to her mum that night, but never arrived at work the next morning. Appeals and searches continued, and then police began treating the case as murder. I was getting ready to go out to meet some friends for coffee on a Friday morning. I had the, the news on, and it came over to say that it, it had been now changed to a murder inquiry. And I got such a shock, I just couldn't believe it. And I thought, why didn't somebody tell me? In 2013, a new police team launched a full review of the case. There were arrests, but ten years on, no one has been charged and there are no answers. I've always believed that she was picked up on the way to work. It must have been by somebody that at least she recognised. There's still a hope. The circumstances in which she's found, I obviously don't know, but I hope at least she is found. I think she's been abducted. And I think the answers will be very, very not far from her home. I say a little prayer on the morning to get me through the day. I'll never give up, never, ever give up. Even if we don't ever find out what happened, she lived and was loved and we want people to know that. The only thing I can do for her now is, is this. There's nothing else that I can do. I can't find her and I made her that promise. I said, I will find you but I wasn't able to do it. So I think this is all I have left that I can do for her. And if it helps in any way, if it shakes someone's conscience, I'm glad to do it. And there'll be a special service at York Minster this afternoon for Claudia. A 38-year-old man who was left badly injured following an assault in Rotherham last weekend has died in hospital. Daniel Dix had been in a critical condition in hospital since the incident. Five men have been arrested as investigations continue. And a 24-year-old woman is in a critical but stable condition after a suspected stabbing incident in Sheffield. It happened at 7 o'clock on Friday evening in Badger Road in Woodhouse. The victim underwent surgery on Saturday. A 24-year-old man has been arrested on suspicion of attempted murder and remains in police custody. Businesses in Leeds are being encouraged to apply for a share of £23 million to help them get ready for the new clean air zone in the city. From next January, drivers of some vehicles will be charged each day to enter the zone. Grants and interest-free loans are available to help bus, taxi and HGV operators switch to less polluting vehicles. Now, Bradford's Polish school is celebrating a special anniversary this year. Seventy years ago, the parents of Gina Toombs set the school up after they were demobbed in the UK after serving in the Polish divisions of the Allied forces. The aim was to make sure their children were taught the Polish language and also about their culture. 
school got in touch with us after our We Are Bradford features last week. Corin Wheatley has more. Hi, my name is Alexandra and I'm eight years old and I'm at Polish School. We come to Polish School every Saturday and every single time we learn the history, the geography and the language, which we find really interesting because it is different from English. Sometimes it can be kind of stressful because like you don't understand something, but it's really fun because you have like two ways to speak and then it's easier. Bringing their heritage to life. Bradford kids from Polish backgrounds come to this school every week and this is one of the ways they learn about the country that their parents or grandparents came from, a play about Polish history performed in both languages. The Polish community in Bradford really began to get established after the Second World War when many arrived as refugees, but it's grown much more since then. This school, an important part of the community, is now celebrating its 70th anniversary. For my generation it was important because they knew they could never return back to Poland and so they wanted to keep the cultural heritage and the language and everything and going as, as much as possible. Now, this generation, they're kind of repeating themselves again because some of them will return to Poland, but some of them won't. The school also gives older people a chance to get together, like Romana, who moved to Bradford in 1957 to work at Salts Mill. There was plenty of job there. They did babbling and mending. And obviously there was a Polish interpreter there that did help it helped everybody with the language and I think the Polish people were really well accepted in the mill. The school says that their community is thriving. They hope these children will keep it so for decades to come. Corinne Wheatley, BBC Look North. Eleven flood warnings remain in place across North Yorkshire after heavy rain at the weekend caused water levels to rise and rivers to burst their banks. The Environment Agency says the River Ouse in York peaked in the early hours of this morning at around four metres and will remain high through today before starting to fall slowly tonight. The Nid, Ouse, Swale and Ewer all have warnings in place. So a lot of rain over the weekend. Let's see if Abby can tell us just how much we've had. Mm, well, enough to uh, have lots of weather watcher pictures that look a bit like this. But here are some stats. So Bainbridge, we had 113 millimetres. This is from the hours of 6 p.m. Friday till 6 a.m. this morning. Now that stat alone might not mean all that much, but the average for the whole of March in terms of rainfall amounts is roughly 100 millimetres, depending on where you are in the region. So some parts of Yorkshire did have around a month's worth of rain over the weekend. Thankfully, though, the forecast is much quieter uh, over the next few days. We've got high pressure dominating, just a few isolated showers to contend with, so we should start to notice those river levels really subsiding. So yeah, we've got high pressure in charge, meaning that, that the isobars are much um, well spaced, far well spaced, better spaced sorry, than they were last week. They were very tightly packed as we did have some very strong winds. But the wind's much lighter today, just a few showers as we'll see a few weather fronts uh, moving in over the next few days. So a bit of an east-west split on the satellite as we head through to the afternoon. But we're going to start to notice that cloud really edging in from the west and it will bring a few showers. Still one or two sunny spells though, just hanging on along that east coast. Temperatures today will reach around 10 or 11 Celsius, so up in the double digits for some, 11 is 52 in Fahrenheit. Then overnight tonight, we will continue to see quite large areas of cloud, mostly dry, just one or two isolated showers. We could see a couple of clear spells and where we do, some areas of mist and fog may well form. It's probably going to feel quite chilly first thing tomorrow morning, not quite as cold as it was this morning though. But we will have probably more cloud than sunshine tomorrow. Just a few sunny spells, I think the best of which always in the east. But again, we are likely to see a couple of isolated showers. Those temperatures, though, just starting to edge up ever so slightly. 12 or 13 Celsius for tomorrow. And if we have a look at our outlook, you can see that by Wednesday and Thursday, we may well see those temperatures reaching about 15 or 16 Celsius. 16 is 61 in Fahrenheit and is above the seasonal average for this time of year. Thank you very much indeed, Abby. That's all for now. We're back with Look North at 6.30. Have a good afternoon. See you later. Bye-bye.